see by default if somehow for some reason a request takes a billion and a trillion three hundred million billion years to complete here i have a plain view application with a laravel api on the back end what i want to do is create a custom access instance that will allow me to reduce some of this configuration boilerplate as well as streamlining this messy error handling in here we're checking for for 22 responses which are returned whenever the validation fails. In that case, we loop through the error messages, grab the first one, and set it on this error validation object. If it's any other kind of error, we just set a generic error message, something went wrong, please try again later. In any case, this is way too repetitive slash ugly, so let's create that custom access instance that will hopefully clean things up. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new directory called lib and then inside it we'll create a file called axios.js We'll import axios from axios and the reason I used an uppercase A is because I want to have a constant axios which will be axios create and in here we'll pass our configuration values the first option we'll add is base URL, and this will be the address of our Laravel API. So we'll do HTTP localhost port 8000. Let's go ahead and export access, and then import it in our login view component. So we'll have slash lib slash access, and then instead of passing the full URL, we can just pass in the path. So I'll remove this. Let's go in the browser, refresh, log in, and here we are. Now, another benefit of setting the base URL is that if we ever need to change it, we'll only have to do it in one place, in our custom access instance. The next option is often overlooked, even though it's a quite important one, and that is timeout. See, by default, if somehow for some reason a request takes a billion and a trillion, 300 million, a billion years to complete, the browser will just sit there waiting. We don't want that. Setting the timeout to something like 60,000 milliseconds, which is a minute, is more than enough even for a poor network connection. And of course, we can override this whenever we need to. Say we have like a request that we know it takes super long to complete, we can just tell Axios, hey, this might take longer than usual, so we increase the timeout to whatever is necessary. So we can have something like a post request to some this takes super long, we can send in some data and then specify the timeout to a super large value or just set it to zero. And this basically means no timeout. Next up, we'll have with credentials set to true. And this ensures the credentials, the cookies, are included with every request. This is super important when using cookie based authentication. For example, when authenticating requests coming from an SPA to a Laravel backend using Sanctum. Without this setting, the cookies won't be included and authentication won't work. You'll just get 4-1 responses all over the place. So if you're using cookie-based authentication, make sure you set with credentials to true. Speaking of cookies, access comes with support for protecting against CSRF attacks. You can specify the CSRF cookie name, as well as the CSRF header name. And access will ensure to grab the correct cookie value and send it as a header. For Laravel, the cookie name is XSRF token, and then the header is the same but with an X in front. So like this. Just to test it out, I'll go in the browser, refresh, hit login, inspect the request. Here we have the XSRF token header. If we change this name to something else, go in the browser, refresh, resend the request, we see the header right here. Let's go back and undo. Now this XSRF config values are actually access defaults, so you don't have to add them. I just wanted to show you they exist because a lot of people are confused about why access works with Sanctum and fetch doesn't. The answer is because access does the getting and setting the cookie header automatically and fetch does not, you have to do it yourself. Next up, we'll have headers, and usually I expect a JSON response, so we'll do accept application slash JSON. 
and we are done with the configuration values. What I want to do next is add the response interceptor. I like to add this because I want to standardize the error thrown when a failure occurs, either due to a failed server response, network, or just configuration failure. The way you do that is by calling axios, interceptors, response, and then use, which takes two arguments, onfulfilled and onrejected. We are interested in the onrejected one, so we'll do null, and then a function that receives the error, and here we'll basically do our thing. But for now, let's just console log it. If we go in the browser, and refresh, enter some incorrect credentials, hit log in, here is our error. We have a 422 response, this is a validation error, and if we inspect the response, we'll see that we have a message, these credentials do not match our records, and then an errors key with email, which is our field, and an array of error messages. What I want to do is loop through this array and construct like a more manageable error object. So let me just maybe grab this, go here, paste it in, and comment it. So what we want to do is have like an error object with status, so we want to preserve the response status, we'll do error response if we have one, status, and then let's say original to preserve the original error object, and then we'll have validation which will be an object and message which will be null. So I want to loop through the errors. We'll do if error response status is 422, so this is a validation response. We'll do for let field in error response errors. Actually, I think it's response data errors. We'll loop through this and we'll basically do error validation of field equals this thing of field of zero. Because we just want the first error message. Okay, we can remove that, this now. We've done this. And then if it's not a 422, I'll just set a generic error message. So I'll do else error.message is something went wrong. Please try again later. And this needs to return promise, come on, reject of error. Okay. And now if we go back to our login view component, we can of course remove these because we've added with credentials true to our access instance. And we can remove all this and just say error value equals to E. Let's add a console to check this out. Go in the browser, refresh, enter some incorrect credentials, hit log in. This works and this also works. So we have the original error message, the status, if we want to do some kind of redirect, if the status is 403 or 401, for example, we have the validation error messages. And if I try this, for example, without an internet connection, so I'll go offline and hit login, we now have the server generic error we just sent. Let's go even further and go back online, go to our Laravel app. So I'll search for authentication controller, authenticated session controller, however that is called. Here's our login endpoint and I'll just break it. Go back in the browser, 
it log in. This will throw 500 error. And this will say something went wrong, please try again later. This is a generic thing. If you want, you can just go here to, our, to your access instance and do like a switch for the error response statuses. So you can do this. And then you'll have case 422 and you'll do this. Then you'll break. If you want a four, four or three, you can just say error message you're not allowed to do that 401 please re-log in and so on let's set this as the default we can remove this now go in the browser refresh hit login okay this works because i fixed this let's break it again refresh login we have something went wrong please try again later that's because we didn't actually handle the 500 case something went really bad sorry refresh try this again and here's the error message. Then let's try the 401. So we'll do abort 401. Login, please re login, and 403. You're not allowed to do that. You get the point. You can customize this however you want. I think that was it. So don't know if you remember what we had here, but this is way, 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 way simpler and streamlined. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, hit the bell button, all that good stuff.